Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. In this video, or podcast, depending on how you're looking or, or getting this, I'm going to show you how to get the TP-Link HS100, otherwise known as CASA, talking to Google Assistant. And that starts now. <laughs> Well, you saw me do a little bit different video last time with, with talking about the Mycroft product, and there's more on that yet to come, and some really interesting things coming with what I'm going to term as a universal dashboard for home automation. And, and it's this has got a lot of potential. I've been digging through this the past couple of days, and I'm going to have to order a few things, read that to me in another Raspberry Pi, that really has got, has got a lot of potential. But I tell you what, this time we're going to continue on with working with the TP-Link uh, HS100, and this time we're going to go through setting it up with Google Assistant. And let's switch over to my good old trusty Samsung S9. We're going to go through getting the TP-Link HS100 talking with Google Assistant. So, as I normally suggest, let's go into the CASA app. Now, at this point, we already see a problem because it's the CASA app is not seeing its own device. So this is an important thing to check, whether it's the TP-Link or any smart home device, and make sure you can talk to it through its native app, because you can't, then obviously the rest of it's not going to work. So for the sake of discussion, we're going to hook and assume that that's fixed. So now we will go to Google Home, and we'll tap the icon in the lower right-hand corner, and then we will type the setup or add option. Then we'll tap on setup device. And then tap on something has, have something already set up. So at this point now to make it a little bit easier, we could search, but we will type, uh, CASA. And Chrissy, it found the TP link CASA. So we'll press enter there. Now it's taking me to, the TP link site for authentication. If you don't see your credentials in, you'll need to enter up at this point, but with having the CASA app already open, that should take care of that. So we'll tap on authorize. And we don't have to assign it to a room, but we'll just go ahead and, uh, yeah, we'll just leave it on assigned for now. And then, that's it. If we go through and look, we should have the different devices already set up because we'll see now here the TP-Link CASA and we'll tap on that. We can tell it to check for new devices as if we've added anything and it's relinking and it only sees the one device. So we're good. So now we can go ahead and test the initial uh, linkage with Google Assistant. Well, now, as they say, the proof is in the pudding. So we're going to go through here, and I'm going to have to use Google Assistant a little bit differently, and that's because I forgot to unplug my nearest uh, Google Assistant hardware device. So in order to keep from fighting it, this is the way around it. So I'm going to go into Google Assistant on my... Uh, on my Samsung. Yeah, the first result is from Google. Okay. Well, obviously it's not. It, it wasn't ready for me. I didn't turn it off. So we're gonna tell it to. I'll tap on the microphone. Turn on sample. Okay. Turning on the sample. Now we can toggle it manually from here, but then I can turn around and just hit the microphone again. Turn off sample. Sure. Turning the sample off. So that's the proof in the pudding. That is really how straightforward it is to get this all up and running. So going into the holidays, I'm going to try to keep the videos fairly short and sweet. I, I hinted a little bit earlier and you, on something that I'm working on, and this it'll be probably into the new year before I have this ready to go. And as I'm recording, this is just before Christmas it's found something called Home Assistant, and it's got a lot of potential. I have initially found a Home Assistant because of what I was doing with Mycroft. And Mycroft, you saw me hold up the blue snowball, or not, well, snowball ice, excuse me. And the Raspberry Pi 3B and the Logitech speaker. 
that's a working open source voice control. Now, Home Assistant is a whole other ball game. It will tie in to Mycroft and to Alexa and to Google Assistant. Now, those the, the Alexa and Google Assistant, I'll probably show a little bit later because those are going to be options that require a third-party service at about $5 a month. That's the rough pricing I've seen. So I'm, I'm going to show you how to do it totally free because if you're a smaller system up and running, that, you know, you may not have a lot of devices. So unless you really want to do Alexa or Google Assistant, then, and we're, and we're going to get to those, but there are so many tie-ins that I'm seeing. This is, this has got me excited because I see a lot of potential. Plus the fact that when I add another Raspberry Pi, I'll have the ability to show a complete full screen page of what's going on. So that's, we'll just see. It's very interesting because I've got some spare ports on my big screen TV. And then we may see about moving it over to a small touch screen or a smaller uh, TV. So it just, we'll just have to see. It's been going to Christmas. I, I want to say to everyone, thank you for those that have subscribed so far. And, and please, if you haven't, please do so now. Every bit helps me. Uh, my, my magic Level is going to be when I hit a thousand because that's going to start giving me some additional ways to reach out to potential companies to for items that I'm going to be looking at with within the smart home technology arena. If you know somebody who is very interested in this, please uh, forward the links to this. I've got this available also as a podcast as well. It's basically the audio only version of this. It's available on uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. You stitch your tune in. I think I've got just about everybody covered at that point. And you can keep up with what's going on by going to techbiteswithronnutter.com. And there is where you'll see the on-screen button. If you want to have this show up on your Alexa as a flash briefing, I've got the link right there. It saves you from all the searching. So I'm trying to to make this as easy as I can for you to, to let you discover things the, the way I have been because there's... Two years ago, a lot of this was not possible, and now it is really, uh, I, I think we're turning around the curve. So thank you for everything that, for everybody who's been watching, for the comments you make, because it really tells me that I'm going down the right path, and I just want to help you. And if you haven't uh, seen the book so far, then uh, this is volume one that's currently out. I'm working on volume two, and this is where there's going to even be more things on there as well. So it's going to be very interesting to see how things progress. I'm already starting to see the early signs when I may have to go to volume three because I could be writing this forever and it would never get out there. But I, I, I've got to get volume one out. I'm probably going to get volume two out well, early next year because there's some things that I really I want to make sure to get in there. And then now with finding this additional way of linking in yet multiple uh voice control options, multiple devices that may not have native tie-ins. This has got a lot of potential. So, sorry, didn't mean to ramble. But again, thank you for those who subscribed. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so now. Make sure you click on the bell notifications icon. This is also available by podcast. If you get by anything that I've talked about in either the videos or the podcast, there are affiliate links in the show notes. I do get a small commission from that. But please, I'm more concerned about you helping you find the right thing for you. And if you buy those, I do get a small commission, like I said, but that's that's not my drive for news. I just want to help you get the same level of enjoyment that I have out of doing all the home automation. So thank you for your time. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions, and I'll do what I can to get them answered. And we'll see you in the next video.